Hey guys, this is your host Eric. Today we are going to watch action genre movie called Chaos. Spoilers ahead, turn on your subtitle, I greatly appreciate your support. Enjoy the video. A gang of robbers stormed the bank and took everyone hostage. The odd thing is that they didn't even touch any of them. The police arrived quickly on the scene. A large explosion occurred upon entering the front door. Hi, oh, today I'm going to tell you about Chaos, another film starring a bald man. On a night of heavy rain, while being pursued by police, a robber took control of the hostage and fled. Following the flip of his car, the robber took control of the hostage and threatened the police. The police shot and killed the robber after shooting the hostage. The bald man and his colleague were the ones who fired the gun at the time. As a result, they were charged. The police officer on the scene became the whistleblower's witness. As a result, they were suspended. Jason York, an abandoned boss, led 20 subordinates to rob a bank and take everyone hostage at the same time on a beautiful day. They used the bank's security alert system to prevent all entry. When the robbers blew up the vault, an employee pressed the call police button. In an emergency, a robber opened fire and killed a bank employee. Jason was displeased after witnessing a fatal accident. He immediately chastised his subordinate for being a jerk. The police arrived at the scene as soon as they heard the news. They gathered a crowd to surround the bank. Callow, who arrived quickly, is in charge of this case. Callow is the cop who tests a fee against the bald man and his. Callow bargains with the thug leader. If you want to solve the problem, bring out the bald guy who killed the bad guy at the beginning of the movie, said the black guy. He is still suspended at the moment. Martin, the captain of the police force, personally went over to invite Johnny Sin back. They not only agreed to return his police badge, but they also assigned Shane, the bald guy, as his new partner. The captain declares this mission after Martin and Baldy arrive on the scene. This time, we're going to Baldy. Callow was furious when he learned this. When he tried to respond, the captain told him to shut up and do his job. The captain even told the Baldy that getting all of the hostages out was critical to proving his trust in him. Baldy didn't expect the thug to teach him life lessons when he was negotiating with him. They keep yelling at each other until they get off the phone. Despite the fact that the story didn't pan out, he discovered that the bandits were extremely. They are not only familiar with the police procedure for solving crimes, but they also use transducers to change their voices. After exchanging words for a long time, the police decided to intervene. The proposed method is to first use the bomb to blow up the door, then send someone inside. But the bald guy believes it is too dangerous because the hostages could be injured if bombs are used. He suggests shutting down the bank's entire electrical system. As a result, the bank's security system will be rendered ineffective and the ramming tool will be used to gain entry. His plan was approved right away. The police believe that after the bank's power was turned off, the backup generator would start up in five minutes. They are compelled to finish the task within this time frame. However, Jason was quickly made aware of the attack. He gave the order to hang two hostages. A warning is displayed on the window. When the bald man noticed this, he quickly disbanded the task force. Tell them to stop the attack. But the task force was in a position where retreat was impossible. The massive explosion occurred as they were about to rush inside the bomb planted by... The bank was nearly entirely destroyed. The dust veeing hostages were running out. Baldy and Shane went inside to investigate and discovered that the interior was completely empty of people. They only discovered a few items left by the robbers. This implies that they have masqueraded as hostages. The CIA agent arrived quickly on the scene. A Middle Eastern prince is said to have left a very important box. However, because the bank robber did not take any money, they most likely came for the box. The CIA discovered hidden meanings in the thug's words after studying the dialogue between the baldy and the thug. Evan the baldy had no idea. He gave Shane money for food before exiting through the camera. Among the hostages, the police discovered a bearded man who appeared extremely suspicious. This hairy guy has a long list of criminal convictions. For a long time, he has been a detrimental member of society. The bald guy then led everyone to the hairy guy's girlfriend's house. As expected, this jerk hasn't changed a bit. During the chase, the police fired back, and we can see that Baldy and Harry are very professional. Shane jumped on his motorcycle and pursued them. Evan believed the bearded man could have escaped. Regrettably for him, the bald man rammed the police car into his car. The hairy man was on the verge of passing out. When Baldy finally knocked him out, the cops discovered several hundred thousand dollars in his girlfriend's house. They discovered something new through their investigation. Surprisingly, this money came from the police department's evidence room. The reason for this is that the police will use a scented liquid to identify the seized goods. Even the bald man had no idea this dirty money came from a bank robbery four months prior. Callow, Baldy, and Shane were the officers in charge of that case. After that, proceed to the evidence room. The security guard stated that the $400,000 was previously located here. Callow did, in fact, take it a month. Callow's signature is clearly visible on the notebook. 
The investigation team believes Callow is connected to the robbery, but Shane believes it's not that simple. He stated that at this point, the captain received a phone call informing him that Callow had been murdered by a stranger in his home. They rushed to the crime scene, where they discovered some Middle Eastern-related plans and documents. The thug called to Callow's house at this time. He is aware that the police have arrived, because the thug house is filled with pictures of Baldy. It was clear from his tone that he wanted to exact revenge on him. Since the bank robbery case four months ago, the police have received information quickly. The Middle Eastern prince's belongings are no longer kept at the bank. In other words, the thief in this case did not steal a single coin, nor did he come for the prince's box. So, what is the true reason for the bank robbery? Through the fingerprint system, the police discovered some suspicious fingerprints on the bank's computer system. They found out it was from a programmer. The programmer was recently arrested for hacking the police pension. That case, by chance, was handled by Baldi and his former partner. However, due to the unintentional shooting at the start of the firm, Baldi and his friend here had their approval rating reduced. As a result, when they went to testify, no one believed them. The programmers were also released quickly because there was insufficient evidence to convict him. Baldi and Shane drove to the programmer's house, but the thug was already there. He killed the programmer first, then Baldi. Shane was almost shot during the fight, but Baldi saved him just in time. Because he didn't want to waste time, the thug quickly pleaded his case. Finally, the hairy man who had been knocked out earlier awoke. That bank robbery also included him in the programmer. But no matter how hard Baldi and Shane pressed him, he refused to answer. Shane finally threatened him by pumping poison into his water bag. He became too terrified and eventually revealed the truth. The police discovered the true identity of the through the clues provided by Harry Guy. According to a reliable source, he was the brother of the original thief who was killed by the bald man. The thug will meet with two other thugs at 10 p.m. based on Callow and the programmer's situation. It can be assumed that the thug will most likely kill people to cover up the clues. The cops knew the time and place for those two robbers, so they prepared an ambush. But the two robbers and the cops waited forever without seeing the thug. They were all quietly watching when a female police officer appeared. Her walkie-talkie abruptly rang the two robbers, who saw that the situation was deteriorating and opened fire. Baldy and Shane then led an attack on the house. Two other officers went into a room and discovered a wall covered in Baldy pictures. This gives the cops even more confidence. The thug is seeking vengeance on his brother. After shooting a thug to death, the female cop discovered a bomb was ticking. All of the cops got out while the Baldy was fighting with the other robbers, so he couldn't. Then there is a loud explosion. The entire house was in shambles. Police discovered Baldi's badge next to a body in an instant. If no miracle occurs, it must be Baldi body. A technician arrived to deliver good news to Shane, who was sitting blankly in front of Baldi's desk. When he copied the word in the bank transaction, he discovered the clue. Normally, copying a bank transaction costs him 3 to 400 pages, but copying a bank transaction today costs him more than 3,000 pages. The thug had instructed the programmer to install a virus on the computer after entering the bank. Because of that virus, this virus can command any account at any time. The robbers have the ability to transfer all withdrawn funds to the boss's account. Normally, the bank is only concerned with the transaction amount, not the number of transactions. As a result, they only need to withdraw more than $100. Although it may not appear to be a large sum of money, if there are approximately 1,000 accounts, the remaining one account will contain a substantial sum of money. Because the virus created so many fake accounts, it is virtually impossible to determine where this $1 billion has gone. What puzzles Shane is why, if you use the virus on Rob, you would risk running into the bank. Because only the bank manager's computer has access to the bank. The technical staff now explains more. What's amusing is that the virus is spreading so quickly because the police have cut off the power to the bank. Shane receives a phone call from the thug as he exits the police station. Except for Callow, he claims that everyone he kills deserves to die. This sentence piqued Shane's interest. He reasoned that Callow could not be innocent. Shane then examined Callow's pen strokes. Finally, he discovered that the security guard had forged the signature. This security guard despises Callow's public condemnation of Baldy. He believes that police officers should not publicly criticize one another. The security guard also revealed the truth about the incident at this time. It turns out that while initially pursuing the first robber, his partner accidentally shot and killed the hostage first. The Baldi then shot and killed the robber. The bank robber, whom the police mistook for the black robber's brother, was actually the Baldi partner. Shane concluded that this was all planned by Baldi's partner because he is very familiar with his method of solving cases. Also, because the thug is always one step ahead of the cops thanks to digital technology, the cops finally looked into the location where the thug called the security guard. Shane immediately pointed a gun at him as he exited the grocery store. Of course, the thug will not give up so easily. 
Both sides opened fire on him while his arms were crossed. The boss of the grocery store employees was ready to fight to the death. Shane tracked the thug down to the dockyard. Following a tense gun battle, Shane finally killed him. The case could have ended here, but Shane discovered something while paying. When Baldy paid, the bill in his hand was at the coffee shop, there is a distinct scent on this note. Shane then realized that this bill came from the police evidence room. In other words, the Baldy and his accomplice planned this bank robbery from the start. It's all nonsense. All of them are forgeries intended to deceive them. Their goal is to steal money and then eliminate all participants. This explains why Baldy wants to shut down the entire banking system. Actually, his goal is to make the virus work by reading a book about chaos theory. Shane realizes he is about to board an escape plane. Shane hurried to the airport. On his phone, he received the Baldy instrument. So how come the bald guy didn't die in that explosion? First and foremost, it's all part of his master plan. Baldy correctly detonated the bomb. Before the bomb exploded, there was a tunnel under the floor. Baldy escaped via the tunnel. Baldy went on to say that everyone he kills deserves to die, except for Callow. Nothing bad would have happened if it hadn't been for Callow's accusations against him in court. If that were the case, not many people would have to die. This is specifically mentioned in the Book of Chaos. A seemingly innocuous random event triggers a chain of terrible events. Shane strongly condemns Baldy's actions, but Baldy blames everything on the unjust society. Screw you all. We see him leaving the airport at the end of the film. We really appreciate you watching. If you enjoy this video, please give it a like. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel with the notification bell because it is really important for us. Thank you.